If anyone's told you that you've been living in a bubble your entire life, it might put you in a spot of self-analysis. But here's the thing, they aren't completely wrong. Now, I'm not too sure if you're living metaphorically in a bubble of your own, that's on you. But scientists have recently discovered that the entire solar system lies within an enormous bubble. This fact has seemingly been baffling the greatest minds around the globe. How did this bubble form? What is it made of? And why are we even in it? Let's find out. Bubbles around the universe have been identified in the past, with the most popular being the Soap Bubble Nebula situated in the Cygnus constellation. Looking at these cosmic bubbles from afar might seem like a wonderful thing to do, but when you realize you, yourself, are within a massive bubble, things get a little weirder. A recent study delves deeper into this concept and reveals that the Earth is surrounded by a vast bubble about 1,000 light years wide, whose borders drive the formation of all nearby young stars. For decades, astronomers have known the solar system lies within the so-called local bubble, a giant void surrounded by thousands of young stars. But there's a whole lot that was unclear about this bubble, including everything from its precise size and shape to its origins and evolution has remained unknown. Researchers investigated this bubble and found some incredible new insights into how this bubble supports the formation of stars. The study's lead author, Catherine Zucker, an astronomer at the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore reveals, Unexpectedly, we found that all nearby star-forming regions lay exactly on the local bubble's surface. We stumbled upon this discovery completely by chance. As the saying goes, most discoveries are by accident, although I'm not too sure who said that first. Researchers sought to create a map of the major landmarks in the solar system's galactic neighborhood. They analyzed the 3D positions, shapes, and motions of dense gases and young stars within about 650 light years of the Sun. Zucker further explains, one of the most challenging aspects of the research was the sheer number of dimensions needed to build a real 3D physical picture of star formation on the bubble surface. The research involved mapping three dimensions of space, three dimensions of motion, and a time dimension. Now we can literally turn back the clock and see how these star-forming regions evolved over the past millennia. In contrast, most of our traditional understanding of stellar birth has been based on static 2D images of star-forming regions. Fair enough, but that doesn't really tell us how it even formed. Well, to answer that question, researchers analyzed the motions of these young stars, which helped them reconstruct the chain of events behind the creation and growth of the local bubble. They discovered that these stars were traveling mainly straight away from the bubble's surface, which indicated they were moving because the bubble was expanding gradually over time. The researchers found that a series of about 15 catastrophic star explosions, also known as supernovae, likely began taking place near the local bubble center about 14 million years ago. Catherine Zucker goes on to answer the question of the bubble's formation, saying, The supernova explosions triggered a shockwave, and this expanding shockwave subsequently swept up a shell of dense, cool gas, that is, the surface of the local bubble, which has now collapsed to form thousands of new stars. There are seven well-known molecular clouds which sit on the bubble's surface that we know of today. For those of you wondering, molecular clouds are dense regions in space where pockets of gas may collapse to create stars. It's been anticipated by scientists that supernovae could sweep up gas into the dense clouds that ultimately create new stars. But the researchers in this study were quite surprised to learn that pretty much every single new star near the Sun is forming on the surface of the local bubble. Zucker further mentions, Basically, we can explain how all nearby star formation began, and in doing so, provide very strong observational support for this long-held theory of supernova-driven star formation, where stellar death can trigger stellar birth. The findings propose that a supernova linked with the bubble has detonated about every million years since the first one exploded about 14 million years ago. Zucker explains, 
we think we know which clusters were responsible for the supernovae that powered the expansion of the bubble. These two clusters, called Upper Centaurus Lupus and Lower Centaurus Crux, in the famous sco sen Stellar Association, formed very close to each other 15 million to 16 million years ago. So all the stars in these two clusters have approximately the same age. That's incredible. But what's really happening out there? The answer to that question, like most other things about the cosmos, is a little around the lines of speculation. But don't worry, we have a fair idea of what's really happening. What's unique, though, is that researchers confirm that stars in these two clusters were born with a range of masses. The biggest of the stars, large enough to detonate as supernovas, also had the shortest lifetimes. The most massive stars will go supernova first, with the less massive ones exploding later. Confirming what was previously believed, the local bubble is not dormant. It continues to slowly grow at about 4 miles or 6.4 kilometers per second. But it has lost most of its fortitude and has substantially plateaued in regard to its speed. Here's what's fascinating about this situation. As the first supernovae that created the local bubble went off, the sun was far away from the explosions. But about 5 million years ago, the sun's path through the galaxy took it into the bubble, and now it sits amazingly almost right in the bubble's center. So why is the solar system right in the middle of the local bubble? This is going to sound a little ridiculous, considering how researchers and scientists want to be exact about everything. Well, here goes. It's in the middle of the local bubble, literally, purely, by chance. Yep, you heard me right. The solar system's travel around the galaxy brought it, literally by chance, in the middle of the local bubble. The fact that the Sun is currently in the middle of the local bubble suggests that such superbubbles may be pervasive across the Milky Way. Otherwise, what are the chances that our Sun is right in the middle of one? The Milky Way may resemble Swiss cheese, as noted by one of the researchers, with holes in the cheese blasted out by supernovae and new stars forming in the cheese around the holes created by dying stars. Zucker explains, the local bubble may be interacting with other bubbles in our galactic neighborhood, and we hope to map out other bubbles and their interactions with each other in future work. One of the most challenging aspects will be trying to determine the ages and progenitor stellar clusters going supernova of these bubbles as we get farther and farther away from the Sun. However, new data from the Gaia mission, Gaia DR3, will definitely help, as it will provide 3D space motions for 30 million stars, a key ingredient in piecing together this puzzle. For those of you wondering, Gaia is a space observatory of the European Space Agency that was launched in 2013, and DR3 is short for Data Release 3. Okay, so at this point, one might wonder what this bubble looks like. Well, we're in luck. The team, using data visualization software, mapped out the asymmetrical bubble. Over millions of years, at least 15 supernovae have burst and pushed gas outward, creating a bubble where seven star-forming regions are found on the surface. The astronomers created gorgeous 3D maps of the local bubble's celestial material. Zucker says, when the local bubble started forming, the Earth was over 1,000 light-years away. We think the Earth entered the bubble about 5 million years ago, which is consistent with the estimates of radioactive iron isotope deposits from supernova in the Earth's crust from other studies. Another contributor to the study and CFA astronomer Elisa Goodman, who founded GLU, the data visualization software that helped piece together the study's maps, explains that statistically the Sun wouldn't be near the middle of a vast bubble if they were not common throughout the galaxy. The local bubble might be just one of the many that we happen to be inside of at the moment. Researchers think that the Sun in its history has likely passed through many, many superbubbles, probably even greater than this one. The scientists' next plan 
is to map out the locations, sizes and shapes of more bubbles in the Milky Way to get a full 3D aspect view of it. By pointing out where these bubbles really are, astronomers can piece together how these bubbles act like nurseries for stars, how the bubbles interact with each other, and how galaxies, like the Milky Way, evolved over time. So, what do you think? Why are we in this bubble? Is it purely by chance that the Sun is at its centre, or is there a deeper answer? And is this local bubble inside another much larger bubble? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching Space Age.